you know, I, I don't, I don't have any delusions of grandeur about the um, importance of filmmaking. However, I, I do feel like there's importance in the process. And by, by its very nature, bringing a film crew together to spend time in that place and bringing people from all different walks of life to work with Native Americans and to, um, to give them um, positions of prominence on the crew and in, and in the creative heads of department and, and also um, um, in the cast and, and behind the scenes. I think that those kinds of, you know, you've been involved in many, many shoots and there's always a family that, that grows from that. And that, mm. that's the most, that's the thing I'm most looking forward to is, is building a family that can have that experience and be there on that, mm. land, touch that land and, and spend time with, um, with the Blackfeet people and get to know them. Yeah. That, that, that in itself will have a, a chain reaction. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, that's really cool. That's, that's actually a perfect note to end this part of the, the session and we want to come back again later when the project's up and running and you're filming and just to get more insight into how it's going and the experiences you're having down there. So, um, so Mark, in, in one in a couple of words or a few sentences, what would you say, like you shared a story of not knowing someone, I just me being the dickhead I am, you know, go up to people and go, hey, mate, yeah, that's good tattoos. Where are you from? Hey, where are you? And just doing that's me, I just being who I am. But there's a big message in that, and I do it all the time with people and help people connect and meet wonderful people myself. So, what, what is your message for that whole story that you heard? We heard from start to finish to where you are now to other people who are starting out, maybe now we're talking about artistic careers right at the moment, like creative, writing, acting, directing, producing. What's your message to people when they feel like it's just too hard? Well, I think it's, it's two things. It's, it's to be open, to remain open um, and to not judge because you can judge people, but not know what, role they might play in your life or what role you might play in their lives mm -hmm. and secondly it's to surrender your own you know it's good to have a vision but to if you if you the more open you are to being receptive i think that vision can grow and it can change and it can it can receive but if you're too rigidly stuck in trying to achieve something in a certain way that can yeah. bog you down. It can shackle you, and you can you can uh, prevent yourself from being open to other other opportunities. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you know what? And I, I'm going to share these. Thanks, for, and, and I'll Doug will finish off with some comments and questions too. But what you just said is so true because, as you both know, my story, and I'm not going to go into the whole thing here. But um, having uh, having been who I am and, you know, wanting to coach and, you know, like mentor. And there's a guy that he runs a great um, uh, platform um, for networking entrepreneurs, right? But I don't know, there was there was something there. I thought, oh, I don't know if I really want to be involved. But he has great people like Les Brown. Les Brown's an incredible speaker and he's with him all the time. I met my girlfriend by meeting him, you know, over six and a half years ago and we met a few years ago. And for all these years, I've been going, oh, I don't know if I really – and I went, hang on a minute. I'm talking to my girlfriend and go, but I met you through him. If I didn't know him, it would never have happened, you know. So I'm like, okay, you need to let that go. And now we are um, – we're connecting up and I'm going to start being part of his connection and entrepreneur because I met, I met another wonderful lady there who runs – and people can Google this – Women of Achievement – Mm -hmm. She runs pageants for women who've been through terrible circumstances, but they've created that into a platform where they share and inspire with others their breakthroughs. Yeah. Now, I'm going, why am I saying that? Because it's my ego. It's because, oh, well, yeah, I don't know if he's got it, but he's got all these incredible people there, yeah, incredible people. And now I've just been connected up with Forbes Riley um, through my girlfriend who knows, and she's an incredible entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, and coach. Yeah. And, so you got to – you just said it, open up and be – if you don't like something, that's okay. But you got to give it a go. You have to be open to give it a go because you never know what you're going to – who you're going to meet or what experiences you are going to have out of that. And you've also 
got to show up how you want to be seen. Look, show up yeah. smart dress. Show up looking the looking the deal. Like not not talking ego. We all need a yeah. bit of ego, but come as a, a real person. And we proved it last night at LA Fashion Awards. I was there with my girlfriend, and all she said, oh, "I wish someone could take a photo of us." I swear to you, within one yeah. minute, we were standing there. Everyone's running around like busy bees. And this lady, beautiful, uh, you know, lady, come past, and her name's Sabrina. She's got a YouTube channel. She's a singer. She said, "Oh, hi, guy. Oh, you look amazing, you too." And what do you do? I do this. I do. Should can I take a photo of you too? And I went, "Of course you can." <laughs> right? We didn't even ask. Yeah. Next thing, another guy goes past, and I said, look, could you help us take a photo? And he went, yeah. Next thing, another guy from behind said, I'll take the photo of all of you. We got the photos done, and when they all went away, I went, we didn't actually do anything. You just asked me, could we get a photo taken, <laughs> right? <laughs> so right. whatever energy you create, you create yeah. the energy, and you will bring people to you. you Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. I mean, I spent most of my 20s feeling pretty broken uh you know i was very ambitious and 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 i most of my time was spent succeeding in my career but behind all of that i was still damaged from having lost two people very close to me to suicide and Mm -hmm. i as a result drew a lot of self-destructive people into my life and and it you know took me a long time to realize that and and Mm, you know why even my habits my habits were drawing me to that place because i hadn't dealt with it you know so i think you the but once i changed my mindset as you say once you put something else out there you can change your reality you know i mean the bible says that what you say what you speak um really becomes your reality and and yeah speak as a reflection of what you think ultimately that reminds me that reminds me a little bit of something that Andy and I learned a while ago. We were talking on the phone and Andy was talking with me about how if you put something out to the universe, you need to be careful what you wish for. Absolutely. He was telling me that when, you know, when I need, when I'm struggling with something, you know, take a smoke and, you know, then get to it later on when you're feeling. Hey, hey Doug, Doug, hey, hold that. You got to explain what I meant by take a smoke. I didn't <laughs> say take a smoke. You got to explain. <laughs> explain. We can leave this in, but you got to explain what I meant. That's not exactly the. Everyone will go, okay, Dad. Um, Doug said I can go and have a smoke because I've got a problem. That's not what I said. Right? <laughs> no, so you, you, you need to explain it. It's basically what he was telling me was do something to relax you for like maybe a few minutes. Yeah. And then when the mind is clear, like take a smoke, for example. And then when the mind is clear, get back to doing it. Doug's referring to is when I was an engineer in the railways, the old drivers used to say, look, when the train breaks down or something goes wrong and you're not sure what he said, what I do is a bit of advice for your young fellow. He goes, I just have a smoke for five minutes, think about the problem, and then work on. So that's what Doug was referring to. It's not actually telling people to go and have a smoke. It means just take five minutes out when there's a bit of an issue happening in life or you just can't – just take a breath for a minute and have a think um, as to what's what's actually going on. And sometimes you can work it out. You know, it'll come to you. Maybe not. Maybe you need to just – let something go for a little while and have a think about it. So it's a good analogy, Doug, but no, we're not encouraging people to go and have a smoke for five minutes. No, <laughs> like, actually see dog style. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, Doug, and you, Doug, do you have any final comments uh, or question for Mark before we, we, we head off? I have more of a comment, you know, about the massacre that you mentioned that America doesn't acknowledge to this day. You would probably know what I'm talking about, but I think some of it is prejudicial views against people that aren't like the average America with racism and even discrimination, you know. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that, you know, harbor prejudices against Christians, against people with disabilities, and even Native Americans and indigenous people that's You know, it's really good that you're starting to bring awareness to this, Mark. I don't, I think I'm just being led, you know, I I didn't, this project originated as something completely different. And then when I began doing research, I came across 
that incident and was completely taken by it and, and in, in awe of it and horrified by it and, and wanted some to just weave that into, into this story to, to say something about generational trauma. And I, look, the, the reason why it appealed to me uh, is because I'm from South Africa and we have generational trauma in our family you know, as a result of, of um, prejudice, you know, and like we, we grew up um, segregated, um, or my parents did, you know, I, I was born in South Africa but didn't spend long there. But my, grand, my family, you know, I, I've seen it in different, different people in my family that that generational trauma can manifest in different ways, you know, uh-huh. um, whether it's a family member who committed suicide or, whether it's certain behaviours or addictive personalities or insecurities or, or things that, that, you know, that they're carrying those things from an underlying sense of inferiority that was hammered into them by a system, you know. And, yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's up to us to break, it's up to the younger generation to break that, but we can only break it when we acknowledge it, you know. So I recognise that in... In, in the families that I'm portraying or the people that I'm portraying. And that's, that's how I'm trying to connect with them is through my own. That's yeah. awesome, man. I mean, it's so great. I can't wait for you to start filming and get production underway and then we can jump on and hear a bit more. But time's uh, a run away. And look, Mark, thanks. I know it's just been hard to get you because you're obviously just so busy with, you know, yeah, that family kids <laughs> knocking on the door trying to break into the interview um and all that so yeah it takes a lot and thanks thanks for making time uh for jumping on and sharing mate thank both of you and and god bless you both for what you're doing and and please keep at it because it's gonna it's gonna grow and it's gonna it's gonna reach the most unexpected places you know i, I really yeah believe. it already has yeah yeah it has it's amazing i mean no one's come up and cuddled me and cried, but they have with Doug. They've come up and give him a hug in the street, and one lady was crying. Said, "You've just, you just don't know what you just did to my family." With some of the mental health interviews we saw, he gets messages. So it's really awesome. Wow, um, it's, it's it's really great. So yeah, and that and look, Doug hasn't. You know, I mean, he's been a bit quiet tonight, but that's not for any particular reason, except you and me are on the same path we've known each other for a long time talking about the industry but he does an amazing job hosting he does an amazing job with all the background he creates all these logos and website he's just fantastic amazing and he's under a lot of pressure so he deals with a heck of a lot you know plus it's an hour ahead where you are isn't it doug it's going to be uh next month Uh after daylight saving yeah Mm. well thanks again mark and uh doug thank you again uh for organizing all this behind the scenes and it's awesome so you can take us away doug kenny